Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book Optimising Car Performance Modifications. It's a book on how you can test your performance modifications on the road to make sure that they're making things better, and not maybe, as, as sometimes occurs, making things worse. I want to talk in this video about testing the intake system to the engine. Now, I'm talking then about the intake system ahead of the throttle body. So that would include the snorkel that leads to the airbox, it would include the airbox itself, the filter in the airbox, and all those tubes and ducts that connect those different parts. How well are they actually flowing air? Now the technique that I'm going to describe is much, much better than say taking those parts out and taking them to a big flow bench and testing them on the flow bench. Why is it better, the approach that I'm about to describe? Because the engine is breathing a real amount of air, an enormous amount of air at full RPM and full load, much, much bigger than can be achieved on any normal flow bench. So how do we do it? How do we measure the flow performance of the intake system of the car while we're driving on the road under full load? Well, we use a pressure gauge. And before I describe the technique, I just want to talk a little bit about pressure gauges in general. So here I'm holding a tyre pressure gauge. We're all familiar with a tyre pressure gauge. We're all familiar how to use it. So if we measure the pressure of a tyre, it might be say 35 psi, that's 35 pounds per square inch above atmospheric pressure. We're always measuring positive pressures above atmospheric pressure. But let's change to a different type of gauge. What I'm holding now is a rather battered vacuum gauge. It measures pressures below atmospheric pressure. So in a typical car use, we connect the hose to the intake manifold and it measures manifold vacuum. But what does that really mean? Well, think of the airflow going into the engine. It flows in through all those bits I talked about a moment ago, the filter and so on, and then it flows through the throttle. Let's imagine the throttle blade is closed, or very nearly fully closed. The engine's trying to draw air, because it's a big pump, it's trying to draw air past the throttle, but very little air can actually get past. That's why we measure a pressure of less than atmospheric, because there's not enough air getting past the throttle body to actually create full atmospheric pressure. So, the greater the restriction posed by the throttle, the greater the manifold vacuum the lower the pressure we're actually reading in there. Hmm, we wanted to measure flow restriction, because remember, we wanted to find out how well things are flowing, so we can apply exactly that idea to the intake system ahead of the throttle body. Think about the air filter. Let's imagine the air filter is caked with dirt and insects. The engine's still trying to pull air through that filter, but if there's a restriction in the filter, directly after the filter, we will measure a pressure that's lower than atmospheric. So you're thinking, can we just use the vacuum gauge? Lots of us have got vacuum gauges. Can we just plumb that in straight after the filter? Well, a vacuum gauge like this isn't sensitive enough. It won't actually measure the pressure drop with any accuracy in the way we want it to. But there are pressure gauges available that are designed to measure very small pressures and are very accurate. The ones that I like are called magnahelic gauges. Now, brand new, they're fairly expensive, but uh, on, online, second hand, eBay and so on, they're actually quite cheap. This one reads from naught to three inches of water. That's a very sensitive gauge, and I'll show you. I'll just breathe on the, uh, the hose, basically. Okay, I just sucked very gently on the hose, created a low pressure, and you can see that the needle moved quite a lot. That one measures to three inches of water. That's the way in which we measure those low pressures. On a car intake system, depending on how good your car is, it's probably better to get a gauge that measures to say 20 or 25 inches of water. So how do we use that gauge? And what's it going to, uh, to show us, to tell us? Well, we connect the gauge to the intake system after whatever we think is restricting the flow. So for example, if you connected it to the intake system just prior to the throttle body, just ahead of the throttle body, you are measuring all of the restriction of the intake ahead of that point. So that would include the air filter, that would include the air filter box and so on. You connect the hose, making sure it's sealed to the intake system. You go for a drive, you select a gear, I like second gear, 
you go to full load, full power, full RPM, second gear, and you read what the gauge says. Now, if the gauge says 25 inches of water, that's quite a lot of flow restriction that you are measuring. Anything over 10 inches of water at full load, I reckon you can typically improve the intake system quite a lot. On the other hand, if it shows only four inches of water at full load, then it's going to be very hard to make significant improvements. We've measured then the whole of the flow restriction ahead of the throttle body. If we want to measure just the flow restriction of the air filter, for example, well, we can measure either side of the air filter. And if there's a big flow restriction across the air filter, then we'll be able to see it because those pressure differences will be great. But here's something that you very quickly learn when you start doing this. Air filters typically have very little flow restriction. Yep, very little flow restriction. I, I've done dozens of measurements on dozens of cars over a long, long period of time. And typically the flow restriction across the factory air filter is only one inch of water. Remember I said 10 inches of water is quite common. Um, if it's less than four inches of water, the complete intake system, um, then, then don't worry about changing it. One inch is a tiny amount. So putting in a high flow air filter basically just reduces your filtering efficiency. More rocks get in your engine um, and makes very little difference to the flow performance. Now, I've talked to people and they say, oh, I don't want to drill holes in my intake system. Well, often you can use plumbing attachments that are already there, PCV, um, valve return uh, line, for example. Um, and the other thing that I often do with plastic air boxes is I drill a tiny hole, I screw in a tiny little plastic irrigation fitting, I connect the hose to the fitting. When I've done the testing, I unscrew that tiny fitting and just put a dob of black silicon across it. And you'd never even see it. So by using a gauge like this, a very sensitive vacuum gauge, the magnahelic ones are the ones I really like using, you can very accurately measure the flow restriction of the intake system under the real world load. And that is a dramatically exciting thing to do. Um, over the years, I've modified plenty of intake systems. I've changed the shape of air boxes. I've added bell mouth intakes. I've put the intake to the air box in a high pressure area, an aerodynamically high pressure area. All of these things you can measure using the gauge. Um, I've put bell mouth exits to air boxes. I've used smoother, larger diameter uh, tubes uh, to, to decrease the flow restriction that's occurring. It's a fantastic technique. It's also one that I cover in the book. I show you how to actually measure the intake flow restriction uh, on the road, on your own car, so that you can actually see, A, whether you need to do something to improve the system, and B, after you've made some modifications, how effective they are in reducing flow restriction. Flow restriction gets reduced, power goes up. Interestingly, fuel economy often goes up as well. Not quite what you'd expect, but that does in fact occur. So reducing flow restriction and then measuring the changes is a very, very powerful modification technique. It's covered in the book, and I really recommend the approach to you. Thank you.